In this video, I'll show you how to solve this multi-step IV past exam question. In part A, we will start drawing the triangle, which is a right angle triangle because one of its angles is 90 degrees. AC is square root of 2, AB is BC plus 1, and BC is BC. So we need to prove this identity. So we know cosine A minus sine A can be rewritten with the definitions of cosine and sine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so BC plus 1 over square root of 2. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so BC over square root of 2. We can then combine the two fractions, and we get 1 over square root of 2, which is what we had to prove. In part B, we need to find the other angles in this triangle using the equation from part A. So we need to square both sides of the equation as we're told to do. So then we get cosine squared a minus 2 sine a cosine a plus sine squared a is equal to 1 over 2. If we rearrange the left side of the equation, we actually get something interesting since cosine squared a plus sine squared a, um, as seen in the formula booklet, is actually equal to 1, as this is a Pythagorean identity. And 2 sine a cosine a is actually sine 2a, as this is a double angle identity. So we can rewrite this whole equation as 1 minus sine 2a is equal to 1 half. We can rearrange it again, and we get sine 2a is equal to 1 half. We can then take the arc sine, or sine the opposite function of sine of both sides, and we get 2a, do not forget to write the 2a instead of just a, is equal to arc sine 1 half. So if you remember, there are two values for arc sine 1 half. Uh, it is pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, so do not forget to include both of them when you're solving this. So then we can just divide both sides by 2 to get a, and we get a can be equal to pi over 12 or 5 pi over 12. Now let's go back to our original triangle for this question and make a equal to pi over 12. It actually does not matter if you make it 5 pi over 12 or pi over 12 since we just need to find the angles in the triangle. So if one angle is pi over 12, that means the other has to be 5 pi over 12 since it is a right angle triangle. So that means the answer to part B is the angles in the triangle are pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, and pi over 2, or 90 degrees. For part C, we need to apply Pythagorean theorem in the triangle to find the unknown side BC and show that sine A is equal to this equation. So let's copy the triangle from part A to solve this. So we need to use the Pythagorean theorem for this. We know that the legs of the triangle, so BC and BC plus 1, um, each of those squared is equal to the hypotenuse, square root of 2, squared. So when we simplify this, we get 2BC squared plus 2BC minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, as you can see, this is actually a quadratic and we can use the quadratic equation to solve this. Now, the quadratic equation gives us two values for BC. How do we know which one to use? Well, we know that the length of a triangle, of a side of a triangle, cannot be negative, so we obviously have to use the plus sign in the uh, expression. So we have square root of 3 minus 1 over 2 is BC. Now, to get back to the question, we need to show what sine A is. So, sine A is um, opposite over hypotenuse, so BC over square root of 2. So, we already found that BC is square root of 3 minus 1 over 2, and all of that over square root of 2. When we simplify this by multiplying by square root of 2 um, on the numerator and denominator in order to uh, rationalize it, we get the answer, square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4.
Lastly, Part D asks us to calculate the length of the perpendicular from B to AC. A perpendicular means that it is a line that forms a right angle with the line it is intersecting. So now we have two smaller triangles and we can draw one of these triangles um, that have A as one of its vertices. So I'm making the perpendicular length um, x, which is what we're trying to find, and the hypotenuse of this triangle is bc plus 1, and we can replace that with the numerical value of bc, so that is square root of 3 minus 1 over 2, and all of that plus 1. We can use the definition of sine a uh, that we defined in part c. We can then replace sine a with the definition of sine in the smaller triangle. So again, it is opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, it would be x over the square root of 3 minus 1 over 2 plus 1. So after a lot of simplification, we get x equals to square root of 2 over 4. And that's the answer for part d, which is the length of the perpendicular. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful, and thank you for watching.